I've had an M1 Max MacBook Pro for three and a half years now, and I haven't heard the fans spin up once. I want that for a PC laptop. I've been watching videos of these new Snapdragon X PC laptops, and it sounds like they're starting to make the same shift as Apple did back in 2020 when they moved to M1, moving away from these hefty, inefficient x86 chips to these more sleek and lightweight ARM chips. So we did some research on these new laptops. We ordered the one that we felt was best, which ended up being the 12 core Snapdragon X Elite Microsoft Surface laptop with 32 gigs of RAM. I sent that laptop straight to Nick for him to test everything in his lab. He put this laptop through the ringer to find out if it is any good as a gaming laptop, a streaming laptop, or a combination of both. The total cost of this laptop was $1,900. And little spoiler for you, Nick said this was probably the best Windows laptop I've ever used. So let's see how it went. I'm gonna send you on over to Nick for him to share his findings with you, but while he's unboxing this laptop, I'm gonna share with you the sponsor of today's video, Owned.pro. Owned.pro is an easy and fast way to set up a beautiful live stream. You have access to over 10,000 design elements that you can completely customize to create your own stream style, no matter how unique you might want your stream to look. I'll mail that back to Harris. You can even customize the color of their pre-made overlays to match your branding. Setup is super fast and easy where you can create a complete stream package in seconds with alerts, widgets and labels added automatically. Very stealthy, very clean. You can upload your own designs, access their massive widget library, create elements from scratch. Own.pro is an easy and fast way to get started streaming. Check it out and get started at the link in the description down below. And Nick, please tell me how that laptop went. My, my turn? Today is an exciting day. Maybe. Today on the Senpai Showdown! Senpai, that's not even a thing. I just, I made that up. <laughs> Super quick introduction to ARM-based PCs so you can understand the backstory. So in a typical computer, you've got the processor, uh, which is commonly shortened to the acronym CPU, and that is the brain. And for decades, CPU from Intel and AMD... So like any good gamer, first launcher I downloaded and installed was Steam. I looked through some of the most recent games that I played and without checking any compatibility lists, I just downloaded the following. Call of Duty Black Ops 6, The Finals, Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Zero West, PUBG, and Rocket League. PUBG. <laughs> Harris makes me play that game. <laughs> Out of those six games, I can only tell you about my experience with two of them because those are the only two that launched. Call of Duty, The Finals, Horizon Forbidden West, and PUBG all just refused to open. Horizon Zero Dawn, which originally was a port from a console, it opened, gave me an error that there wasn't enough VRAM that was available to play the game, but it still ended up launching. The frame rate maxed at about 20, and then it crashed a couple of minutes after that. So understandable, sad, but understandable. You tried, little bro. The only test subject that lived was Rocket League. And it's actually a good thing because Rocket League is a really good game to test as a content creator. It's quite a taxing game to record and stream. At 1080p, I was averaging in between like 120, 130 frames per second. Uh, and that was on the middle graphics quality. It was a very pleasing experience. And especially on the laptops, very bright. 120 hertz display. And once you get a laptop that just has a gorgeous display, you realize what you've been missing this whole time. Obviously, this is quite limited testing as far as games go. To be honest, there aren't that many games that are supported. But if you're curious about what other games might be on this platform, we're gonna leave a couple links in the description. There are sites that are dedicated to tracking what games are playable and, and how they run. So there'll be a link down there in the description. And, uh, it's kind of slim pickings out there, but it's slowly growing. What about live streaming? So this is the setup that I rolled with. The Surface itself hooked up to a 39 inch 4K 75 Hertz monitor. It's my main Mac mini monitor. Bluetooth Logitech MX Ergo, Elgato Wave 3 mic, Elgato Stream Deck, Opsbot Tiny 2 4K, that's connected via USB, Elgato 4K X capture card, and then my Sony A6400 going into that capture card. And then I'm also going out the capture card into a little monitor here so I can monitor myself. Making all of these connections possible 
in just a few ports because there's only two USB-C, one USB-A. So it's, it's dongle life for us, unfortunately. I then booted up Rocket League with the same settings. I just kept all of the, the quality settings on high, the in-game quality settings. The computer didn't like that at all. Uh, so I had to drop the quality of Rocket League back down to, I think it's called performance, which is like middle ground. And then we were rocking again. So eh, rocking on the edge, I would say. <laughs> CPU usage was around 45%. Memory was at like 48 to 50%. And then the GPU was bouncing around the 80 to 85% mark. Still wasn't feeling any noticeable chug with the device itself, but the fans were kicking, let's just say that. Experiencing what I had experienced so far, I didn't want to do a live stream with an audience. I didn't feel like it was going to be smooth and entertaining. So I opted just to do a just chatting live stream and I live streamed for about two hours and 30 minutes. I had no issues whatsoever, except I did try and open Rocket League while I was doing that and it didn't like that at all. The, the GPU maxed out, it stayed pinned at 100% and you know the entire computer just started to bog down. So I stopped that fast, I didn't want it to crash. This is unlike what a lot of people are used to, especially if you have NVIDIA GPUs, you are using the NVENC encoder, which is a separate encoder and you can max that out and not have your whole computer lag. But again, because this is an SOC where all of this stuff is kind of one unit of hardware when the GPU started maxing out, everything started maxing out. At this point, the laptop has struggled with being a gaming machine and it's struggled with being a streaming machine mostly, but performed pretty good at just being a, a just chatting streaming machine, like IRL style. However, as somebody who ran a dual PC setup on his stream for years, and as somebody who still runs a dual PC setup for recording, I was curious to see if this laptop could be used in a dual PC setup. And by the way, this is just recording. Not We're not doing a dual PC streaming setup, just doing a dual PC recording setup because the streaming didn't go so well. OBS was averaging between 50 and 60% usage. Like just OBS was using 60% of the entire CPU. And I even got a lot of over encoding errors. The footage looked smooth and frame rate, but it was just very, very blocky. Now, keep in mind here, OBS is not natively supported on ARM. This is not a native install. This is OBS being emulated to run on ARM. So the results, again, understandable. My final test was just to see how far that I could push it. So my gameplay settings wanted to keep them the same. 1440p, 144 hertz, so this is what I tested. 1440p canvas, x264 encoder, medium preset, fast preset, faster preset. 1440p canvas, the AOM AV1 encoder, and I set the CQ value to 30. 1440p canvas, I tried the SVT AV1 encoder, CQ value of 30. It didn't the it said the encoder couldn't even be found which that was, that was something I hadn't seen before. I was like, okay, bring it back a little bit more. 1080p canvas in OBS, X264 encoder, medium preset. And then I tried the fast preset. We didn't overload the encoder, but the footage didn't look good. Finally, after lowering the OBS canvas to 720p, still using X264, medium CPU preset. I had the CRF value set to 23 smooth quality footage. I wanna to touch on some hardware and software compatibility because so far, this has been a little bit of a emotional roller coaster. But don't you worry, we're not getting off the ride yet. <laughs> Out of all of those apps that I installed first, Arc, Hardware Info, DaVinci Resolve, and Power Toys were the only four that had native app installers for the ARM architecture. And they worked like a charm, they worked great. None of the other apps had installers even available, but most of them ran emulated just fine. Core Temp, GoXLR, Elgato Wavelink, and the Beacon apps would not even install. They gave me, well, I'm sorry, the GoXLR app installed, all the rest of them wouldn't even install. I'm gonna put a few additional links in the description for you. These are websites that are dedicated to showing what software is and isn't supported. Okay, so that's the software side of things. So what about the hardware that I tested? So during this test, I tried the Elgato Wave 3 microphone, the Elgato Stream Deck, Elgato 4K X capture card, 
Logitech MX Ergo, a random USB hub, a random USB hub from uh, UTEC Smart, the Obspot camera, Go XLR, and then the Beacon mic. All of the Elgato hardware and software worked, except for Wavelink. There's just no drivers available for ARM. And then while the OBS Center app would open and it would allow me to communicate with the camera, that would crash every so often. Um, but I was able still to get it set up. And then lastly, the Go XLR and the Beacon mic were the two like final devices that I wanted to test and get running. Um, but because they both run off of their companion apps exclusively, they didn't work at all. You can't even use them. Well, the Beacon mic shows up as a input device and it'll work as a microphone, but you can't use any of the plugins or the processing. So not really useful. The last point I wanna highlight is how well this laptop performed while having way too many high bandwidth, high powered USB devices plugged in for how little IO it has. I only had two USB-C ports and one USB-A port to work with. And yet I was able to cram all of that hardware into those three ports with the help of a few adapters and hubs. So that was awesome. So even with all of that plugged in, OBS open, live streaming, just chatting. I didn't feel any chug from hardware or software. I even opened up multiple edge browsers just to start browsing the World Wide Web and see what happened. Didn't care, still extremely fast. Using the device day to day, testing all of the things over the past couple of weeks, the general performance of this thing is pretty insane. It's the most responsive laptop I've ever used, for sure. Super snappy. Never felt like I was getting bogged down. I was able to get, I think, eight hours of battery life unplugged, um, which is pretty unheard of when it comes to Windows laptops. The display is crazy bright, 120 hertz touchscreen. Oh, lovely. So this isn't a hardware review, so I don't wanna bore you with the technicals, but all the specs and features considered, this is probably the best Windows laptop I've ever used. I have a, a work laptop that is a couple years old, but was $2,600, and this thing blows it out of the water. While a lot of today's video has been a little bit of a bummer, there is a glimmer of hope. Might be short-lived, but who knows? Foreshadowing. <laughs> DaVinci Resolve, which is one of the most powerful media editors out there that also happens to be free, now has a native client for ARM. And I say media editor, not video editor, because it is also a great, amazing color grader and a, has a really good audio editing platform as well. It is just as feature rich and robust as the video editing part of it. With video editing, you can tell immediately if you're gonna have a good time or a bad time. It's immediately apparent. I created just a brand new project, mostly default settings. I pulled a nine gigabyte file from one of my old projects. It's a uh, hundred megabits per second, 4K 30 clip. So just drop that right into the timeline. I left the playback resolution to full and I didn't generate any proxies and I could just scrub left and right, left and right. And it was smooth as butter. As much as I have hyped Apple Silicon and MacBooks and, and Mac minis. I can struggle with that right out of the gate. So it was really cool to see this. I then opened up the color tab, made a bunch of arbitrary color grading edits and went to hit play, still smooth. Grabbed the little scrubbed eddy, went back and forth, back and forth, still smooth. I was impressed. Taking a look at the task manager while I was doing this, I was seeing results similar to when we were trying to game and stream Rocket League. Just holding on for dear life. It, would, it was getting up there, but if it performs that good, playing back at full resolution, that means you can drop the playback resolution to half or generate some proxies, and this thing would fly as an editing machine. I looked around online, and there was barely any content coverage of the release of the ARM version. It, it looks like it just came out at the end of August of this year, so maybe we're a little bit early. But as a whole, to me, this is a win and definitely gets me excited. So with all of that testing said and done, what is the answer to the question? <laughs> okay, what's the question? Oh, can you, the streaming, content creating, meme labbing extraordinaire, use this device as your exclusive technological home base? No. Well, if... No, you saw the tests. The only truly successful live streaming I was able to do was 1080p full screen camming. 
the the video game support isn't there the tools and utilities aren't there the hardware software driver isn't there so you really be putting yourself in a tough spot if you decided to make this your main device for content creation, especially if it was for exclusively or mainly live streaming. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but we are getting there. This is very promising. The speed, the battery, the quality of the build, you know, a few big names already having ARM support. This is a step in the right direction. And honestly, the apps that were emulated and not native they weren't awful either, need some work, uh, which is why it was awful to read this tweet 10 days ago. Qualcomm cancels all Snapdragon dev kits, refunds all orders. Wait, the, the Qualcomm that made this? And then this tweet five days later, ARM is canceling a license that allowed longtime partner Qualcomm to use ARM intellectual property to design chips escalating a legal dispute over vital smartphone technology. So, you know, that kind of leaves things up in the air, doesn't it? I mean, at this point, you're probably better off just building the PC yourself and then installing Linux on it, right? Ah! <laughs> no, no, almost had you. And there it is.